Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of this Idle Game Maker tutorial series. Now since you are here I assume you are a beginner and want to make a game using this engine but have basically no idea where to even begin. And I don't really blame you because there isn't really that much documentation on it. Hell there aren't even uh, any tutorials on YouTube as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Which is why I decided to make one myself. Uh, to teach you how to use it and how to make a game. So, before we continue, let's overview a little bit uh, of uh, what you will learn during this course. So, we will be creating a game from scratch, it is going to be called Coin Mania. Uh, we will get a bit more into the, into the game design of the game later. Uh, for now, you just need to know that we are going to be making a game from scratch, and we will learn the full process of developing a game in Idle Game Maker. But you will also learn lots of tips and tricks on how to write clean code and this is especially important in Idle Game Maker because you write your entire game in a single source file. Now what does this mean? Well, let's say you have a really big game, 5,000, 10,000 even lines of code. And if you write messy code it can be very difficult to manage and add new stuff and update the game. <clears throat> and yeah, this is why clean code is very important in general, but especially important in Idle Game Maker. <clears throat> we will also learn how to add icons to your game and change the background. This is something a lot of beginners struggle with because the handbook doesn't actually explain this very well. And we will also learn what makes a clicker game fun. Now you might think, oh, well, it's just a clicker game, right? It, I mean, what can be so hard to make it fun? But you'd actually be quite surprised by how many <laughs> bad games I've seen. Or, well, not really bad games, but just games that aren't fun made in, in this engine, but also clicker games in general. So we'll be analyzing a few bad clicker games, a few good clicker games uh, later on in the series and see what makes them tick or what makes them, well, not tick. We'll also learn a bit of CSS. Now CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Uh, it's a bit more complicated, but don't worry. If you're a complete beginner, you will at least learn the basics of CSS, but this is more so an Idle Game Maker course and not a CSS course. So <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit separate from this engine, but don't worry, you will at least learn the basics of it and what are you will learn what style sheets are, uh, how to style your game, at least a little bit, and yeah. <clears throat> of course, we will, we will also learn overall programming knowledge. So that means if-else statements, for example, variables, code indentation, and so on and so forth. Now, before we start again, <laughs> there are a few resources that you should keep in mind when uh, developing a game. In this engine. So, as I've mentioned previously, obviously the Idle Game Maker handbook. Uh, I said that it uh, doesn't really explain many things very well, but only to a beginner. If you are more familiar with the engine, it is actually one of the most useful resources you have. <clears throat> but probably even more useful is the Discord server and the subreddit for sharing your game and asking questions about any problems or you know maybe bugs you might encounter with the engine and there are there are always people to help you out uh, so I've linked all of these in the description the discord server and the subreddit and also of course the handbook so where do we write code in this engine you might ask well it's a bit different from other engines uh, code in Idle Game Maker is written in a text file or pastebin. Now, throughout the series, we will be using pastebin exclusively because uh, it's very simple to set up and easy to update code with. Uh, <clears throat> but in that case, you might ask, well, why should I use a text file if I'm more advanced, right? <clears throat> well, the answer to this is actually pretty simple. Pastebin is really good for smaller projects. Uh, however, if you have a bigger project, a bigger game with uh, thousands of lines of code, it uh, pastebin becomes uh, rather laggy and unstable. 
uh, a text file, however, uh, can basically hold tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of lines of code, and it will almost never lag, or shouldn't. <laughs> So there's your answer why when you're a beginner you should use Pastebin and when you're a bit more advanced or just have a bigger project you should use a text file to source your code and your game. Now using a text file is a bit different from using Pastebin to source your game so <clears throat> I will probably make a YouTube video as well explaining how to do just that. Okay, we are about to start writing code so the first thing we need to learn about are sections. So there are 10 main sections, well technically 12, but two of them are bugged. So we, in this series we won't be going over includes and items. Now what actually is a section? Well, it's a part of your code where certain things and components belong. And things in Idle Game Maker are upgrades, buildings, resources, achievements, shinies, and so on. Components are actually a things or a section's subsequent effects. <clears throat> so we will go more into detail what uh, effects are, what things are really, because this is just an overview. So don't worry, we will explain as we go. Now if you want to, you can also pause the video here and read a little bit about uh, uh, this snippet that I have taken directly from the handbook uh, and it roughly explains what each section does but you don't really need to because we will explain each section in depth in this series. Uh, for today's episode we will mainly just focus on the let's make a game section and so today we won't really be adding any gameplay just yet but don't worry we will very soon. Alright, so we are in Pastebin right now, uh, hopefully you made an account already, if not uh, just make one, it's it's free and uh, we have a new paste right here. If you don't have this window here you can create a new paste by just pressing uh, this green button that says plus paste, right? Okay, so we have a new paste, this is officially the start of our source file. So. The very first thing you do in every single idle game maker game is you write let's make a game on the first line, right? And this is our first section that we have created. <coughs> now, uh, before we continue, we of course uh, we must you must remember this that you need to set your paste exposure to public and your paste expiration to never. This is very important otherwise uh, the game will throw an error when you try to load it. Of course, uh, we should also name our paste. I will just name it Coin Mania. You can name it whatever you like, it doesn't really matter. And then we create new paste. And there we go. We already have a game that we can load up, although it's basically without any content right now, but that's fine. But before we continue, let's actually uh, explain uh, how the sections work and uh, what the Let's Make a Game section is as well. So, how do the sections work? Well, a section is declared in your source file by writing the name of the section and below the section name you declare things and or components that belong to that section. So what does this exactly mean? Because it can be a little bit confusing. Well, let's take a look at this diagram that I have created and let's notice the green areas, okay? So this is our paste, right? We already created let's make a game and we have created a new section, so the green areas are our section names. Alright, and now let's take a look at the yellow areas. So below the let's make a game section, in this yellow area, only components of that section will work. So for example, below buildings you just declare new buildings, below upgrades you declare new upgrades and you for example cannot obviously declare new buildings in the upgrade section or vice versa right and yeah that's it we can move on to learning about what the let's make a game section actually does and what it really is okay so in our source file we have declared our very first section it's called let's make a game and what does this section actually do well this section contains essential information about your game such as the name of the game, description of the game, 
the author of the game and so on and this is also the only mandatory section in idle game maker otherwise the game will load which is why I directly specify that uh, you begin every source file with uh, let's make a game because otherwise uh, it's not really an idle game maker game so if you want to uh, you can pause the video and take a look at uh, this snippet that I've taken for the handbook however uh, you may have noticed that this author is crossed out and that is because the handbook is actually lying to you author uh, doesn't work you uh, only only buy works right so if you put author in the let's make a game section it i believe throws an error so only use a buy and your name but yeah that should be pretty much everything about this section uh, we can move on to adding these components to our source file Okay, so we are back in Pastebin. Uh, now your source file should look like this, like, right? Your paste. But all you need to do is just press edit and we can make changes to our code. Now, I need to tell you something which I will get a bit more into detail in a minute. But you should always indent your code, right? You can indent your code by pressing tab. And what this does is it makes your code um, like magnitudes more readable, right? I will show you in an image uh, very soon, but let's just focus on adding uh, more code. So let's first start by adding the name of our game. So in my case, it's Coin Mania. If you renamed your game, of course, you would put a different name. Now, as I stated before, you don't use author; you use by. So this game is by me, Iron Disaster, and whew, what, what other components were there? <laughs> I can never seem to remember. I believe, oh right, the description, okay. So you can make our description rather simple, okay. I won't get too much into detail, so let's just make it nice and plain. Get as many coins as possible in this simple clicker game. Okay, now there's also the created, so we can uh, say in my case I have created this game on the 7th July 2023 and let's say that the version is, oh well, let's just have the version be 0.0. .0. So now we save changes and we already have a game basically and uh, the way we load this I will show you in just a second but yeah congratulations on getting this far alright so what I wanted to show you as well I've mentioned this uh, f just a minute ago is that you should always indent your code right and as I've mentioned indenting your code makes it a lot more readable and manageable and you can indent your code by pressing tab on your keyboard now the important thing here is to notice these two comparison images, right? So, uh, what I want you to do, right, or at least try your best to do, is to make your code look as close to this as possible. Because look at how uh, nice and readable that is. And compare this uh, to this image of the same code, by the way. This first image is just way more readable and manageable and yeah, you can make sense of this code a lot easier than of this code. So just remember always indent your code and yeah. Alright, congratulations, you are almost at the end of the first part. So the one last thing that you need to learn is how to actually make your game load. So I have actually opened up the handbook here because it contains a link that you will need. <coughs> okay, and this is the important section. How do I play my game? So, here it says to play a game, take its source files URL and, app and append it to the following. So this is the link that we need. So you copy and paste it, if uh, you cannot find it or you're having trouble, don't worry, I linked it in the description as well, this exact same link. But also notice that on top of on the pastebin, on your pastebin files URL, you have this uh, unique code. Now every paste has a different code. Mine has this uh, K40G1 code. And what you now need to do is 
basically just copy and paste this into your hotbar or your search bar then copy uh, this code at the end of your pastebin files URL and just paste it in front of this equal sign then you just press enter and your game should load there we go game loaded and this is amazing because we can basically now start adding buildings, buttons, everything we need to make a proper game. But one last thing I need to tell you about is that everything that we added here is actually shown in the info section, uh, which is right here. So you are playing Coin Mania, by your Disaster, yeah, everything looks as it should. And yeah, that should honestly be it for this episode. In the next episode we will delve into settings, maybe a bit of gameplay, a bit of game design, how our game will look. And yeah, hope you t uh, hoping to see you there. Thank you for watching and if you want to you can donate to my Patreon. Of course it's optional but it would make me very very happy and extremely motivated to continue this series and just pump out a lot more episodes a lot more quickly. Of course optional though but yeah, I would be very, very happy. So hopefully you found this tutorial useful and thank you very much for watching.